Hey everybody, it's been a long time since I've tested or reviewed a 12 volt fridge on the channel. Now that's mostly because I haven't seen any new features that make a big difference in fridge performance until now. Right here on the table I have the new Anchor Solix Everfrost 2 and there are two features that make this fridge awesome. First off, it uses removable lithium iron phosphate batteries and if you guys are familiar with the channel, a couple of years ago I had a bad fridge battery experience. But you will not see that with these lithium iron phosphate batteries. The second thing allows for much better energy efficiency. That is this built-in fan. This fan circulates the air unlike any other fridge I've tested and it actually cuts the power usage in half. And I'll show you guys those numbers later in the video. Now let's do a quick walk around the Everfrost 2 so you can see all the features. This is the 40 liter option, so it's the middle size. There's one smaller and one larger. The first thing you'll notice are these large six inch wheels, and this allows you to roll over many different types of terrain. Now, right above the wheels, we have this battery cover. And as I open that up, you can see I have one of the batteries installed. Each one of these batteries has 288 watt hours of capacity. And what's really cool is if you take out this accessory tray, you have the ability to double your capacity by adding a second battery. Now let's go ahead and take a look inside the fridge. You'll see that the fan is shutting off as you open it up. That's a very simple design. Right here you have a light, so it illuminates the inside if it happens to be dark. And then on this 40 liter model, you just have a large single compartment. Now the sides are lined with metal for good efficiency. And then the bottom actually has a large plastic tray, so you won't dent that. And if you happen to spill or make a mess, you do have a drain plug so you can rinse it out and then drain the contents out of the bottom instead of tipping over the fridge on its side. Now, one thing that I've noticed throughout all the testing on this fridge is how fast it cools down. And that's because the fan can circulate the air around. And you can see after about 10 to 15 minutes, we're already at 35 degrees on the inside of the fridge. Now, it's also really good to see that we have a large, thick rubber gasket here that lines perfectly with the top of the fridge. And when we shut this, it does have a slow close lid design, so it's not gonna smash your fingers. And then the latch works really well. Now here's a quick demo of what can fit inside this fridge. You can see I have two gallons of milk side by side and they fit perfectly. I also have these soda cans stacked up on top of each other. There's not quite enough room for the lid to close with three cans stacked on top. Now I've also noticed that whenever you close the lid, it runs the circulation fan to kind of mix up all the air and it's super quiet. I'm not sure if you guys can hear it. See it spinning there. Now on the front of the fridge, right next to the lid, there is a bottle opener. So if you need one, it's built right in. Now on the opposite side of the fridge, you do have this handle here and you have this extending handle that allows you to move it around with the wheels. But the extending handle also has this support that pops out and gives you this nice table. Now this supports 66 pounds or 30 kilograms. And I will say it is fairly sturdy. Now I've zoomed the camera out so you can see what the tray and the fridge look like. And I love designs like this where it has two purposes. So it's this tray whenever the fridge is sitting around, but this also is the handle to tow around the fridge with the wheels. And then I love that it just folds right up. So you can also carry the fridge with these two handles. You can tow it around with the wheels or you can use the tray. Now I've made the swap over to a 12 volt fridge or electric cooler like this seven years ago while camping or on road trips. And there are four main advantages to doing that. First off, you get much more space on the inside of the fridge because you don't have to deal with the space that ice takes up. Also, as that ice melts, you don't have to deal with the soggy or wet food. The third thing is that you don't have to interrupt your trip to go out and get ice at a convenience store or a gas station. You can just leave this at camp, no ice needed. And the fourth thing is that you can set the temperature exactly what you want on these fridges. For example, this one has the ability to go all the way down to negative four degrees Fahrenheit, all the way up to 68 degrees. You can set it anywhere between those two values. Now on the side of the fridge under this flap, there's actually two input ports. One is designed for 12 or 24 volt batteries. The other one is designed for a 100 watt 12 volt solar panel and it can take up to 30 volts input. Now there are actually four different ways to power up the fridge or charge the batteries, starting with the included AC wall adapter. You plug this into an outlet and you can charge the fridge at around 100 watts. The next option is the included 12 volt car charging cable. You can plug this into your vehicle or a standalone battery or power station. It will also charge around 100 watts. 
The third option is a USB-C power delivery cable connected directly to the battery. You're gonna see around 60 watts input using this option. And the final option, which I absolutely love, is charging with a portable solar panel. As long as the solar panel doesn't go over 30 volts, you can connect it in. And I love being able to charge the batteries with the sun throughout the day. Now what's really cool is Anchor includes this accessory tray that holds the adapters and charging cables so when you're not using them, it slots right into the second battery bay. I wanna take a second to go through the display and the control interface. Right here you have the main power button. You use this to turn on and off the fridge. You just press and hold it. Right here you have the temperature button. For example, if you press this, you can change the set point. It's currently set to 36. You can go up and down. I'm gonna leave it at 36, but once you leave it there, it will save the setting. Now you also have this settings button here. You can go through and change the mode of the compressor, the screen brightness, the voltage protection, the temperature unit, and also the language. And to get out of that, you can come up here and press okay to go back. You also can lock the screen by pressing these two buttons at the same time, and then you can unlock it by pressing them again. And that just keeps you from accidentally changing the temperature on the fridge. Now, as for the display, you see the internal temperature here. You can see the remaining power in the battery right here the mode of the compressor, and also if it's connected to the Smart App. Now up on the screen, you're gonna see the Smart App connectivity for the fridge. We're gonna select the fridge, and right at the top, you'll see that we're connected via Bluetooth. Now the internal temperature is 35 degrees right now, and we have some settings below that. So the first off, we can adjust the cooling mode of the compressor. You have max mode, which spins the compressor up at a faster speed and cools down the fridge faster. You have smart mode, which is a balance between max and eco mode. Now I have it set to eco mode and I like to use that. However, if it's really hot outside or if you have it set to a really low temperature, it's best to use max mode. Now for the set temperature, you have the ability to go from anywhere from negative four degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 68 degrees. And I love this wide variety. I have it set to uh, 36 degrees right now. And below that you see the battery capacity and we see it's at uh, 94%. Now at the bottom you can see if you, have, if you have power going in or out and if the compressor was running you'd see power going out of the battery but right now it's sitting idle. Let's go into the settings. There are a bunch of settings here. Screen brightness you can set between low, medium, and high. I like to have it set to medium. And for the screen always on setting, if you're someone that doesn't like to have any light on when you're sleeping you can turn off the screen which I think is a very cool setting. Now below that you have voltage protection. I like to keep it on medium, but you do have the ability to set it on low or high. Now my recommendation here is if you have a lithium battery, you can set it to low, like if you're running it off a power station or lithium battery. If you are running off a 12 volt uh, lead acid battery in your vehicle, I like to set it to high. Now a good safe option is just going right to medium. You can adjust the device name below that. You can change the Wi-Fi settings. So if you want to have this connected to your home Wi-Fi so you can access it remotely, you can do that. You can change the temperature between Fahrenheit and Celsius. And one of the best features is this ability to upgrade the firmware. Not many fridges allow you to do this, but if they ever want to make a change to make this more efficient or to adjust the temperature accuracy, they can make a change here in the firmware. So it's always really good to see that. So very cool settings inside the Smart App. Now I mentioned in the beginning of the video that this is the most efficient fridge that I've tested. And I've tested almost 30 fridges on the channel and all those results are available in my power station grading system. If you look at the bottom, there's a tab that's listed 12 fridges. You can click on that and see all of the data. And this one uses the least amount of power. Now in order to get the most realistic power consumption numbers, I do four 24 hour tests. Two of them are here in my basement studio where it's around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. And the other two tests are in a closet with a heater set to 85 degrees ambient because as the temperature rises up, the fridge compressor uses more power. So it's good to see how much power it uses as it's in a hotter environment. Now up on the screen, you're gonna see a summary of each one of those tests. And we're gonna start with the left-hand side or the 70 degree ambient test. I had the fridge set to 36 degrees. It pulled a total of 110 watt hours which averages out to 4.5 watts. That is extremely low power consumption. When it was set to five degrees on the inside, it pulled a total of 290 watt hours or around 12 watts average. So you can see it does use more power as you have it set to a freezer. Moving on to the 85 degree ambient test, it pulled a total of 190 watt hours when it was set to 36 degrees or an average of eight watts. And then when I had it set to five degrees, it pulled a total of 500 watt hours or an average of 21 watts. These numbers are much lower than other fridges that I've tested. Well, now that we know the power consumption, what about the temperature accuracy? 
Well, throughout all my testing, I always have a Bluetooth thermometer on the inside tracking the temperature so I can see how accurate the inside temperature is versus the set point or the display. Now jumping into the results, on the left hand side we have the 36 degree test. The maximum temperature was 44.4, the minimum was 36.0, and the average temperature was 40.8. So just a little bit higher than the 36 degree set point, but not bad. This is a total temperature swing of 8 degrees Fahrenheit. Now moving over to the 5 degree set point results, there was a maximum temperature of 7.7 .7 degrees, a minimum of 4.5, and an average of 5.9. So these are right on the money. So basically as the temperature is lower, it's a little bit more accurate than when you have the temperature set to 36 degrees. Now what about the compressor and fan when they are running? I'm a pretty light sleeper, so if this was gonna be next to me, I didn't want it waking me up in the middle of the night. Now I got my sound meter and measured at three feet away. It's right around 45 decibels, so not that loud. This is what it sounded like. Now right here I have one of the extra batteries. You can see it has two different USB ports and there are four lights that kind of turn on to let you know how much is left. And if these batteries sound familiar, it's actually because they're the same batteries that are used in the Anchor C300. And this is the C300 DC version, so 288 watt hours. It's a lithium iron phosphate battery. I absolutely love this little beast right here. I love that it has these 140 watt USB-C ports and it has two of them so it can dual charge at 140 watts input. Now the biggest question about the fridge, and probably the most important one, is how long are the actual run times when you have one or two batteries installed? Well, I've done a bunch of different tests here. If the temperature is around 65 to 70 degrees, on one battery, I got 73 hours of runtime. That is absolutely crazy. Now at 85 degrees, remember as the temperature goes up, it uses more battery power. So at 85 degrees ambient, I got 36 hours of runtime. So that is pretty decent on a small battery like this. Now, if you have two batteries, basically you can double that. So if it's around 65 to 70 degrees outside, you're gonna get around 145 hours of runtime. And if it's around 85 degrees, you're gonna see around 72 hours of runtime. And remember, you can charge with any 12 volt battery, a solar input, or even USB-C. So there's lots of ways to charge those internal batteries. Now just remember, if it's even hotter, like around 100 degrees ambient, you are gonna see more power usage. Now what about the price of the Anchor Solix Everfrost 2? Remember, this is the 40 liter version, so it's a little bit smaller. This one has an MSRP of $899, and it's actually on sale till the end of this week for $699. So you can save $200 if you happen to pick it up by the end of that sale. Now, I was looking on their website, and they actually have a bunch of different accessories that attach to this rail here. And if you remember, during my CES video, they actually had a pop-up 100-watt solar umbrella. Now, that would be cool if they brought that one to market. Now, after all the testing that I've done, I feel that this fan actually makes a difference because if you think about it, these chest style fridges, basically all the cold air settles at the bottom and usually the temperature sensor is in the middle. And so if the air is never mixed up, it's going off the middle temperature instead of the bottom. But this fan right here blows all that air around. It gets the air to be all the same temperature inside the fridge. So you don't have a hot spot or cold spot and it also keeps the compressor from running as often. So you get really, really good run times. Let me know what you guys think about this fridge. I will have an affiliate link to it down in the video description if you guys have found this information helpful. I always love to do these in-depth tests on these fridges to find out actual power consumption numbers. I haven't really seen that on any of the channels. So if it's helpful, let me know by smashing the thumbs up button. Thank you for watching. I'll recommend a couple other videos that you can check out and guys, we'll see you in the next one.